This isn't a tablet, it's not a laptop. It's the HiGal Go 2 Pro, a mini PC with built-in screen and even a battery. But who is it actually for and can it justify the price? Let's find out, starting with the unboxing. Inside the box, it's bare bones. The unit, a 36 watt charger, and a paperwork. That's it. No stand, no HDMI cable, no extras. The device itself feels like a cross between a pocket display and a desktop. Ports are generous for its size. At the left, we've got micro SD slot, two USB 3 ports, and a combo audio jack. At the back, we got 12 volt DC input, HDMI, gigabit Ethernet, USB C, and two more USB C 3 ports. So, yes. Full input output, but again, no stand, no cable, no frills. You get the essentials, but nothing that makes it feel premium. Booting up, you're greeted by a tiny AMI splash screen, teeny built-in speakers and a gyroscope that auto-rotates the screen. Portrait mode YouTube shows technically possible. Yeah, it has a battery, 19 watt hours, about 206,000 milliamp hours, basically mid-range phone capacity strapped to a Windows box. The 6 inch 720 pixels display is sharp enough, but glare and fingerprints are constant. Fonts are microscopic, I needed reading glasses though, my son didn't complain. Speakers are thin and quiet. And cooling, we got a small fan, already audible at idle. External monitors do work via HDMI, but only one at a time. Docking for dual displays failed. So yes, it's novel, but ergonomics are rough. No kickstand, noisy fan, and screen too small for serious work. This runs Intel Celeron N1595 with 4 cores, 4 threads UHD graphics, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and a 256 gigs SATA SSD. RAM is soldiered, so no upgrades. And on paper, it's fine. In practice, this SATA SSD is slow. 304 megabytes per second read and 173 megabytes per second write. On the load, the CPU throttles to 9 watts, hitting around 90 Celsius during a simple Windows update. Geekbench 6 tells the same story, 471 single and 1292 multi-core. GPU in OpenCL 1790, that's a Chromebook level. Even light multitasking stutters. Battery, don't get excited. This isn't a laptop endurance. The 19 watt hours pack translates to around 2600 mAh, so basically a phone battery being asked to run Windows. In practice, I got about 90 minutes at full brightness, maybe 2 hours if babied. Push harder and you're in wired mode, not portable mode. Standby is pretty decent, a week in sleep, but real use means short stints only. Charging is fast, around 30 minutes to full, but only if you use the included 36 watts brick. Many PD chargers just don't play nice. Now, daily use. Light browsing and office work are possible until tabs pile up. Then background updates throttle everything to a crawl. Fonts on a 6 inch Windows desktop are predictably microscopic. I tried scaling them up, but Windows actually warned me not to. When the OS itself says, don't do this, you know it's compromised. Gaming. Some casual apps like Candy Crush run fine. Retro emulation, spotty. Mario Kart in Dolphin half work but only with a USB keyboard or controller. Touch controls don't map. My dream of a pocket retro console dies here. Roblox runs on default settings but my son kept calling it a bit laggy. And after a while, the system got hot enough that he started using it as a hand warmer. At least it's multifunctional, right? Now, thermals and acoustics. The chassis gets hot, 50 to 55 Celsius on the outside. The fan ramps up to 55 to 60 decibels, louder than many gaming laptops, for a 9 watt CPU. Set it down and you literally leave a warm patch on the desk. It's proof of poor thermal design. A cheap this week should be silent and cool, not a hand warmer with a jet engine. 
So who is this for? Not for gamers, not for creators or power users. Instead, it's very specific niches. Field engineers who need full windows in their pockets, maybe tinkerers running servers, routers or diagnostics, or students or travelers who want real ports in a tiny box. I like to think about it as a Swiss Army knife PC, useful in weird cases, but not a daily driver. So Hegel Gold 2 Pro is fascinating, a portable Windows box with a touchscreen and more ports than any tablet, and in some niche cases, sure, it makes sense, but as a daily driver, it's hot, it's loud and slow and frustrating, and at around $180 US you're really paying for the novelty, not for execution. Agree? Disagree? Drop your hot takes in the comments. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, I know you want to. Family Pop TV